Zoom. So, those of you who are joining us on Zoom, you're very, very welcome. Come on in. I know it is a bit ahead of time, so I could try and do a little dance, an Irish dance and make it a but maybe not, maybe that can be the right thing to do. So, what we're going to do tonight is, well, it's tonight here in Dublin, so it's at minute to 6 p.m. So, I like to start on time, a bit earlier, when we get a chance to, to join us, but they may not be joining us, so it's not so it's a new subway. Water against So, um, just to talk about tonight, so what we're going to do is we're going to go through a process that I know, if you implement, will absolutely bounce you out of this recession quicker. Now, don't be put off because some of you may not have some of the tools we talk about, but that's not a problem because we know better time to start with something. So let's get started. So let me just share my screen. And okay. So you can see my PowerPoint now. And I'll just play start. And hopefully all the technology fits together and we'll be all okay. Come on, screen. There we go. So hopefully you can see now my bounce out of this session faster slide. So just to give a little bit of background. So for those of you who don't only on one file, I'm the president of client success and CEO of the Infinity Group, which includes Fair Sound Solution, includes Business Success Academy, and for those of you who are doing our brand photo value. So I've always believed in lifelong learning. So I constantly, constantly try and be thinking of you. So I've done the masters, I've done the diplomas, all that sort of stuff. And last year I became a certified story band guide because marketing is my first love. And I'm also a pocket book professional coach. So some of the insights there will come from not just my 30 plus years of experience of business, not just my experience of failing in business in our last recession in 2008 when I had a company people in it and have tied it there to a car with our pants down and the business then bust. So I have a lot of experience of both success and failure. That's from my failure I have learned most. And all of that learning combined with that experience combined with all the learning I've done has helped to help me come up with some of these concepts and to take some other people's concepts and the men slightly for our industry. That's what we're going to go through today. Okay. So I came up with the three or circles of bouncing back quicker. Let's just talk about these just briefly. So for me, there's three things that will help us bounce back quicker. The first is you've got to have a plan. But a lot of us don't like planning because it's, oh no, if I have to write anything down, can I take the figures and all that stuff? And the answer is yes, you do. However, don't panic. I have created a system, a tool to help you do that really, really Okay, so the other second element then is a database. So if you have a database, and the companies that have a database will bounce out of this quicker. Why? Because you will be able to contact past clients and put your offer in front of them. And then the third thing that will help you bounce back quicker is if you use online marketing products. Because that can help not just with existing clients, but can also help us bring some new clients. Okay. So existing clients bring new clients back, existing clients back and develop new clients. So there are the three or circles of bouncing back because so we're going to delve into that today. I'm going to cover off all of this today, but I'm going to give you a flavor and I'm where I really want to start with is I'll be starting with numbers. But if you do this, you will bounce back quicker. So those of you who have seen me before know that I talk about the business plan being like the recipe for food. There's some essential ingredients you need, and with this then the bounce every second is the same thing you need first. And I mentioned already that the first one of those is the plan. So let's just talk about the plan. If you think of the business plan as the recipe for your success, you've got to have the right ingredients in the right proportions, and you've got to follow a process of implementation to make it happen. 
And I have been in the position where I've had to create business plans for my bank to get a loan. I've had to create plans for many capitalists. And they end up this thing, right? And it fulfills that function, and then you never ever see them again. Okay? You never use it again, because it's not usable, it's not friendly. So the two-page business success plan was invented by um, Traction, um, and I've just taken the two-page business success plan, and I've modified it a little bit to make it more specific to our industry, and also more specific to what we um, use with our thoughts around how you position a brand about your marketing strategy and all that. And today we're going to talk a little bit about that marketing strategy, using online funnels and stuff. More importantly, we're going to go back a step and we're going to talk about the numbers. Why are we going to talk about the numbers? The numbers are really, really important because the numbers will dictate what you actually have to do to drive your business. And if you're like us, we've been closed now for March, most of March, April. It looks like we're going to be closed down in May. So we have three months revenue to take up. So part of this process is sales. What do I need to do now to make up that journey? So let me move on. Over so if you've seen me before, you've probably seen my three circuit of continuous business success, which leads into the planning process which is that there's a discovery stage, there's a decide stage, and more important than love you want to do it stage. You've got to go and do it, you've got to implement, you've got to put the petals to the metal and get moving. And the discover and decide stage involves in research. So that's the difference from research and what you can do. The actual plan then is between the decide and the do it, and they overlap there. And then quantifying is really important. You've got to quantify these things to know whether you're successful. We know as creators that we go, oh, no, 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 but you know what? Everything comes into a number. Even the art of these creations digitized from the series of zeros and points. So unfortunately, I know we're right brain people, and we don't like to think more left brain. You have to. If you're going to bounce out of this in a second, you've got to spend some time with the numbers. I'm a creative too, and my job involves doing it both. I have a commercial responsibility in our business, and I have a creative responsibility to work on the vision and the marketing and where we're going to business. And I love that side of it, and I don't like the quantum side as much, but I have to force myself to do it. Because doing just one of them isn't going to make it. Okay, so let's move on. So here's the two page business success plan that breaks down into some areas. I'm not going to go through all this tonight because. A couple of weeks of just this alone. So, working out our 10 year plan for our business, our values, our personal values, our business values, our market strategy for our three year position statement. We're not going to work on that tonight. Instead, we're going to go straight to tech. Why? Because we've got to take action now. We've got to know what action we're going to take. So, I'm going to concentrate on this top piece, which is dealing with revenue and profit and all pay and OPEX and all that. I know it sounds horrible. But I made it as simple as possible. I found a tool to help you with this question. Okay. So, to bake this perfect cake, according to the perfect recipe, what well, essential tool would I need? And I ask this question all the time about every question. Eventually, somebody normally says, What do you need in the Wayne's Gate? And the like, Wayne's Scale is, is to bake you that your financial system is creating a successful business. I've seen other people in the think tanks who talk about Wayne's Gate, Wayne's Gate, Wayne's Gate, Wayne's Gate, Wayne's Gate, Wayne's Gate, and we've talked about, you know, that's the savior for our business right now. Because we've learned these things and we've implemented these systems, we're able to ride out the storm. And in 2008, when our business went bust, I wasn't able. We didn't have those financial reserves to do it, but I learned that lesson and I did it now. And if you're in that position that I was in, you know, you know learn from it and implement this now. Because there's always going to be something. Always going to be some disaster somewhere that leads to this. I'm just going to check my phone because I'm on my own, I have no tech team. And the reason why I am, in case you don't want to see my screen, I'm going to tell them. Um, uh, oh, that's okay. Okay, no, you're saying to me. I just want to double check. Sorry, um, okay. 
So what's next? So part of force, let's just talk about why it works. The force is human behavior. So part of force is based around human behavior. The second thing is it uses bank balance attention. So if you're like me, you probably, when you're considering buying something, but let's just put this in context. So I'm walking around the trade show. Oh, those days will be back someday and maybe they'll be too soon. But you're walking around the trade show and you see a new light or a new lens or a new camera button. Oh, I want that. If you promised your partner you're going to spend any money, yeah, but what you do is you go, I deal, they're not going to have this deal again. Let me just check my bank balance. And we check our bank balance and the money is there, and we go, oh, we need the expenditure. Stop and make a big grab. And you spend the money, yeah. And that's bank balance again. A lot of us do it as small business owners. On our cash flows and our finances based on our balancing. And profit force is designed to deal with that. And to put a system in place that you're not tempted to spend money, but you shouldn't spend money. And the third piece is Parkinson's Law. And Parkinson's Law is very simple. Parkinson's Law is principle that if it's there, you're concerned. It's as simple as that, and that's human nature. So, like just the money being in the bank balance, if it's there, we spend it. And if you're like me, I've always been like that. But he's there, and I want to use tell a funny story. She said that we, I have two other siblings, and she said, No, no, we're going to go and put it to that sibling. And the money that we get, that we got pocket money, uh, an iron collection, etc. But from the, you can get the personal community often, they use it for some money. And she said, The money wouldn't be in his pocket until we put it on the house. So if you're like me, Profit force is even more relevant. Okay. So Parkinson's law, let me just share a little story about how I succumbed to Parkinson's law. So in the past, I've explained that the money wasn't that good in my pocket. But the best way I describe it is I love that thing, especially something. And I have a tennis partner that I tennis with together for 20 years, and his partners are getting more than one percent of them. So I'm always starting new diet. So that many years ago, I was like, wait, this time, when I started this brand new, I'm actually on private because I have to the plan. Back down in the second. So I'll just tell you a story. So last year, I started new diet, and I went over to see Gary, Santa Cruz is secure with the cake, and mm -hmm. I made up my mind, not have men, then I have And then I went, you know what? Gary is just, I kind of want to make a I'm going, well, then, here just before, here we go again. So it's all I do. I put a small little slice of the cake, and then I said, No, I did not actually have my dinner. I can't eat almost half of the cake. So I put a little slice, and I eat it. So I probably can eat some politics and all this stuff that we can eat. Um, and we're actually on the great sound as well. So we great fun. And two hours pass, and I look down, and guess what? Three quarters of cake are gone. And guess what? I eat all very much. So that's Parkinson's law, as supposed to that if it's there, you can see it. But if Sandra just cut me with the slice and let me with the slice, would have had that, and I would have been happy with life. So that's Parkinson's law. Okay, so the profit force financial system, I'm not. We don't have time to go through all the details of this, but I just want to explain the core principle so that we go then to use the calculator, we know what this means. So profit force works in the principle that, first of all, you take your profit force and you get down in a second, right down in a second, it owns pay. So this is the piece that a lot of business owners don't respect them. So when I ask a business owner, who's the most important person in your business? Because other people do, they often say, oh, it's my researcher, Mary, or it's my chief photographer, Dan, or it's my accountant, or it's my salesperson, or whatever it is, yeah? But really, nobody works longer, harder than you, at the end. And quite often, we're the ones who sacrifice themselves for them. So, profit first ensures that you always pay the owner after you take the profit. We've also, as profit first professionals, now there's 460 of us roughly throughout the world. And that has allowed us to analyze thousands and thousands of things. And what we discovered is that. Companies of certain sizes, depending on the size, that 
all of these categories relate to a best practice protected that we have for us. So most businesses who are probably online now, or you have revenue is probably less than around three hundred thousand dollars or thereabouts. So if that's your case, that's the number that they can start. But I then turned this on its head and I said, right, so let's say we're planning out there with this recession and I can't think, you know what? I have to pay myself five, ten, fifteen, twenty, fifteen hundred. The number doesn't matter. Okay? Over the next five months. So we're not going to do a year's plan now. We're going to do what do I need to do over the next number of months to recover what I've lost and let's start with what do I need to put in my pocket? So this number can be anything. Don't get hung up in the number. I want to just to tell you how it's going. So if that number happens to be 50,000, I've only chosen 50,000 because it makes the maths easier for me. That's who worked through this process. Right there, right there. All right there now. So owners pay, if it's 50,000, best practice tells us that if that's 50%, that has 50 percent then our real revenue has to be 100,000. So don't get hung up on real revenue. Just bear with me. I'll explain that. And our profit, we should be looking to make 5,000, which is 5% of real revenue. And if we put 15% of real revenue away, we will have enough money at the end of the year to pay our tax bill. And based on a business with real revenue of 100,000, the total operational expenses of our business should be no more than 50,000. So what are operational expenses? For everything else, every other expense you have in the business, that's out of your profit, but you're going to pay yourself and always pay it and back. Now, we're working backwards in all this pay. So I worked out then what you do next is you would say, what? How many sessions do I plan to do in this time frame that result in a sale? So they're sales sessions. So again, we're working backwards. They're not in the buy, they're in the sales sessions. So I said, in this time, I want to do 100 sessions that would result in a sale. So what does that mean? So it means then, if my average cost of goods, so I look back and say my average cost of goods per session is normally 350. So if I'm going to do 100 sessions, then my cost of goods, i.e. my lab bill, and everything else I buy to sell to the client, is going to be 25,000. Okay, so my average is 350 by a Which means my total sales will be 125,000. So what these numbers are telling me that if I do 100 sessions, yeah, and my sales are going to have to be 135,000, with cost of goods of 35,000, in the real revenue of 100,000, in the profit of 5,000, put 50,000 in my pocket, pay my tax bill of 15,000, and I'm going to run that business with offsets of and that means that my average sales value is be one thousand two hundred and fifty. Where did I get that number from? I took the number of sessions that are going to result in a sale, and I took my total sales and my total revenue, and the value would get one three five zero. So why is that number relevant? But as part of the plan, that number now tells me that I have to build my sales system, build my value set to deliver an average sale. Across those 100 sessions, I can make a few and make these numbers happen. Okay. So let's go do that now for you. And when we do, and I'm give you a tool to help you with that, you're going to be able to then come back here and you're going to be able to fill it in on the next two pages of the success plan. And they're going to give you access to it there. And I'm going to end this just for a second. Come on, computer, bring me back. Hello, guys, I'm back with you. Come on, computer, I can see. I think my computer is dying from all this activity. Okay, so let's just go back here now for a second. Let me stop the share and hopefully you've got me back now. Okay, we have a chat, so I'm going to ask the questions before we go to the tour. Okay, let's just see what people are asking. I can hear you, but the quality of the audio is awful. Oh, I apologize. Is everyone, Ronald's audio is bad when you're showing slides or page for that change? I can't understand about half the words you're saying. Hi, Ronald, a lot of words are garbage. Oh, I apologize. And I wonder how can I fix that? 
And same here, the audio sounds very funny. Okay. Um, I apologize. I wish I saw your comments a little earlier. Why should I put these in and see if these get better? Let's try that. If you bear with me for two seconds. Let's try that. Um, I'm going to disconnect my AirPods. Plug that in. Can someone tell me if that's better? Just somebody just say something in the comments. Much better. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. So we're back on track. I'm not going to go back over everything. I apologize for that. I should have seen that a little bit earlier. Okay. Let's go back. Okay. So let me, let's go straight to the tool now. So I'm going to show you where we're going to do the tool that you don't have to worry about making all these calculations that will actually make them for you. This tool will. Okay. So where am I going? Uh, where's Chrome? Hello. Chrome. There we go. Okay, and let's go to here. So I'm gonna show you how to get there. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put in, you don't have to do it now, but later on, you're gonna put in 3xmsolution.com forward slash Ronan, and I'll share that link in here and bring you to this page. If you're not already registered on the 3xm website, you'll need to do that. And here is the two-page business success plan that I showed you in the slides, so you can download that later. But I'm gonna go now to the business calculator. Okay, so we've tried to make this really, really easy. Okay, so in the example I gave you, do you remember? I said, what do you want your annual take home page to be? And I put in 50,000. This can be any number you want. So I'm gonna change this just to 20,000, yeah? Because I'm gonna work on the basis that it's 20,000 for now. How many individual sales do you wanna do in the next year? We're changing this, yeah? This was normally done for a yearly plan. So what are you gonna do, what do you wanna do not for the full year, but to get out of this, yeah? So let's say I'm gonna do, over the next couple of months before the end of the year, I'm planning that I hope that I'm gonna do 30 of them, yeah? What's your average cost of goods? Do you remember what that was? So your average cost of goods is, for every sale you have, how much money are you spending on product? So your wall art, your folio box from 3XM, your album, whatever that is, yeah? And we put that in there. There's little I buttons here that explain what they are too. Then I click next. And what this then is telling me, it's doing the calculation for me, that if I wanna pay myself 20,000 net and end up with 2,000 in my profit account, 6,000 in my taxation account, and 12,000 in my OPEX, I need to have total revenue of 50,500. My cost of goods, my lab bill is gonna be 10 and a half, and my average sales value is gonna be 1683. That's what I need to do to do those numbers. If you change any of those numbers, the calculations will change. So let's say this becomes 30, and this becomes, I'm gonna do 50 shoots, and I hit next, it'll update all the numbers, yeah? So on those numbers now, I need to do 77,500 revenue, my average sale has to be 1550. But you see how important those figures can be now to help us to create our plan? Okay. So that's that piece. I'm gonna come away from the calculator now and go back to the presentation. And this tool is available to you absolutely free. It's a wonderful tool, I absolutely love it. Um, and I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna share the PowerPoint. So when I do those numbers then, we were able to come back here and we're able to transfer them in here. And forget this one year plan. This is now a get out of recession plan, yeah? What are we gonna do between now and the end of the year, yeah? So we're gonna be able to fill in the real revenue, the profit, the average number of shoots you're gonna do, the average cost of goods, the owner's pay, the taxation, the OPEX, and you've all that information done. And the beauty about the two-page business plan is you can print this out now and put it in front of your desk so it's a daily reminder on what you have to do. So that'll give you the focus needed because you're gonna to have to focus really, really hard coming out of this recession to bounce back quickly. And those who do this and plan and focus and implement this stuff are the ones who are gonna bounce back quickest absolutely gonna bounce back quickest. Okay, so what's next? So we gotta add flavor now to your marketing plan. So we're back to baking the cake, yeah? And the flavor for me is, is the only time I put the cart before the horse. What do I mean by that? What I mean by that is we've identified by doing those numbers that we need to do whatever number of people's 
sessions that result in a sale, people who buy. So what I ask you to do is to consider this from the point of view that we're going to work backwards from that to figure out things. So let's say your sales process is you get an inquiry, you do a pre-shoot consultation that results in a shoot, that results in a viewing sales session, and people buy. So we know how many people are going to buy from the calculator, what we need to get. So then I ask you, so if you know how number are going to buy, how many sales sessions do you have end up with somebody buying? Of the people who do a viewing, how many shoots do you have to do to get that viewing? So if you're doing an instant viewing, for example, where you're doing a shoot and a viewing together, th that number is going to be identical. Yeah. And then I ask you, so of all the pre-shoot consultations you do, how many of those result in a shoot? So you might say, well, I have to do five pre-shoot consultations to get one shoot. Yeah. And then prior to that, I asked then for how many inquiries or leads do you need to generate to, to, for each pre-shoot consultation? And what that allows us to do is it allows us to figure it out. So I've just done some numbers here. So based on the numbers, I've calculated that of a, for 100 people to buy, I need to do 111 viewings, because out of every 100 people who buy, um, 11 don't. I'm doing, everyone that I do a shoot for comes back for a viewing, so those numbers are the same. Out of every shoot I do, I have to do, do, do pre -shoot, two pre-shoot consultations. So if I do two pre-shoot consultations, I know that one of those people sign up to do a shoot. So that's two, two, two. And then I've done the numbers based on that for every inquiry I generate that one out of five end up doing a pre-shoot consultation. And again, don't worry about the numbers here because we've a calculator to help you with those numbers. And you might say, well, I don't have all this data. I don't know what that is. Guess what it is. Your plan is not what it's gonna end up exactly like. It's what you believe it to be. And I guarantee you, if you go through this process and try and work backwards and you go, I think it's that, you'll be really, really close. If you're only starting out in business, it's a great place to start too, because then you have a plan and a target and you can measure what actually happens against that. Okay, so we calculated earlier on the numbers that we did that for owners pay of 50,000, with an average sales value of 1350, my marketing then, which is going to generate these inquiries, has to work to create 1,110 inquiries. So now for my plan, I now now have some figures to follow through on that. I now have a target that to achieve this, I need to do that. So let's just go back to the calculator and show you where that numbers are done. So I'm going to stop the share there. I'm going to share the screen and I'm going to go straight back there and I'm here. So these are the numbers we put in earlier. So when I click the next button, it asks me these questions. So for every 10 viewings, I do how many result in a sale? And I'm gonna say all of them, 10 out of 10. For every shoot you do, how many viewings do you do? So I'm gonna say all of them. For every 10 pre-shoot consultations, how many result in a shoot? I'm gonna say five. And for every one pre-shoot consultation I do, how many inquiries do I need? And I'm gonna go five, yeah? So. That now, when I click next, tells me that in order to achieve the desired sales of 50, you need to generate 500 inquiries, which your order average, which your order average value needing to be 1,550 to result in 77,500 worth of sales. And now the math is done by just answering some simple questions. And now I have a plan to move forward with. Okay, back to our presentation. And that tool is available to you absolutely free. Okay, so share screen and let's just go back to the presentation. Okay, here we go. So we've got our numbers, so then we're able to transfer them in here. And we're able to put the ratios in here so that as we go through, we can measure those through. Right, so do you remember when we were talking about the three circles, we talked about a database and we talked about if we have a database, we can market to new clients. And then we said also, also then, when we do that first and we market to existing clients, then the other piece that we need to do is generate new clients. 
So a lot of photographers talk about when they generate new clients that Facebook ads are dead, that they don't work for them. And that is really based on the fact that, first of all, Facebook's not dead. So Facebook's not dead. So just to share some data with you. So the top marketeers in the world who buy media online spend a lot, a lot of money every single day on Facebook. And in Business Success Academy, one of those great media buyers is Jonathan, who just happens to be my son. Um, I'm proud of him because he is another business where he spends more than $1,000 a day on Facebook, generating media and traffic to other companies, websites, and funnels. And he only gets paid if the traffic he directs results in a sale for that client. And he has a really nice business based around that. So, and he and his network, he's in a mastermind group of 20 of these um, media buying um, online marketeers. And he's one of the smaller ones. He has one mentor in that group um, who started as a mentor with him and now they're, they're, they're working together who does this and earns millions a year doing it. Jonathan isn't anywhere near that level, but um, what I'm trying to explain here is that this is possible. Then we also have Bradley Bulmer in Business Success Academy, who's a photographer based in the UK, and he fills 80% of his diary using online marketing. So if it doesn't work for you, it's just that you're, the problem is that you're not using it properly. And there's certain rules on so social media that you need to operate with. Okay, it's one of the most effective uses of generating leads than is out there, other than word of mouth, yeah? And it's also a wonderful way to build a brand. And there are normally two different objectives. So the objective we're gonna concentrate here is lead generation on new business. But also, if we've got a database, how can we use online marketing to streamline the process of bringing them back in to the studio. Okay, so that's what we're gonna concentrate on. And the answer is using a funnel. So just like the perfect cup of coffee, if you have a funnel, you can bring your clients through that funnel and that system, and um, you can automate it. Because I'm a big Mike Michalowicz fan. So, I, so Mike Michalowicz is, developed Profit First, but he's developed a whole lot of other things. And he's developed things like um, Clockwork, which is about systemizing your business. Um, he's developed um, Pumpkin Plan, Identify an Ideal Client. He's, he's an absolute genius. And um, why I say that is that you cannot be profitable in business unless you systemize it. And the best way to maximize the return on your marketing investment is to systemize it. And the best way to do that is with a marketing funnel. Okay, why do marketing funnels work? So I'm now, I started life selling 32 years ago when I joined the family business. I was there three months, our top sales guy left. My dad said to me, Ronan, um, there's a van, there's keys, you're on the two day sales course, go sell. And one of the key principles we were taught then was that of every person that you that is a possible client, no matter what you do, 50% will never buy. If you give it away for free, they still won't buy it. But 50% will buy, but not all of those who buy are ready to buy now. In fact, on all the data they've collected, only 15% will buy now. And this data was true then in face-to-face -face sales, and it's still true, true now in online marketing. All we've done is changed the tool. We've just changed the marketing and sales tool from people to automate some of it using social media, because that's where people now are. The other 85% then who will buy, will buy at some stage, and they've measured that stage to be somewhere between 90 days and two years. So what we're trying to do when we come out of this recession is two objectives. One is to maximize our effect to get as many of this 15% to buy now, while at the same time working a system that we develop these 85% of people to buy at some stage as quickly as possible. So hopefully that makes sense. 
if I translate that back to you for the salespeople, the salespeople when this was face-to-face -face selling all the time, the most effective salespeople were those that didn't give up, i.e. they kept calling, 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 calling over a period of time until they got in front of the client and that client was ready to buy. Yeah? Okay, so the principles are the same. So what is a marketing funnel? It really is just a series of Facebook ads. You might use lead magnets. You're bringing them to a landing page, which can be your website. So a landing page is just a fancy name for an offer, a specific offer that you bring your client to. So for example, those of you who've been on my website reviews, your website is a landing page, yeah? And what a lot of photographers do sometimes is they drive traffic to their homepage that talks about stuff generally. So what I mean with that is you might be a photographer doing multi-genres. So you talk to the client about those, um, you, you put an ad in talking about weddings and you bring them to a page and the first image they see is a newborn picture. They're gone because you spark their interest with weddings. So in the website reviews, which is the same as the landing page, you need to drive your marketing traffic to a page, whether that's your website or a specific landing page that talks just about that offer. Okay, and then it's a series of emails and Facebook retargeting to maximize that 15% upfront. And how we do that is we have a funnel. So the Facebook ad brings them to the landing page, which might be a page on your website. And we normally offer them something of value like a lead magnet. So the seven, a guide to the seven perfect poses to look great on your wedding day if you're a wedding photographer. They download that, and a lot of people then who do that already, they then say, thanks very much, good luck. But the great marketeers, like the great salespeople, say, just in case you are ready to buy now, we'll bring you to the money page. And the money page is about converting those who are ready to buy now. Those who aren't ready to buy now, we can populate into a series of emails, and we've chosen a three-day email sequence here because the other marketing tactic you can use to maximize the sale is. If you say to somebody, this offer is open forever and you can buy any time you want, what happens? People put it off, right? So this system is designed around the principle of show that there's, it's time bound that the offer is, and then you follow them up with three email sequences to say that this offer is ending. You better act quickly, yeah? And then if your audience is big enough, you can retarget them with the same message on Facebook. So all of you, I guarantee you've seen this in action, but you may not have been aware of it, but that's what's going on. So there are certain rules with regards to custom audiences and how they work and all that, and we're not going to go into that tonight, but I just want to flavor you to tell you what you can do. So this is also relevant for your existing clients that you have in your database. So you can send them out an offer, except instead of driving the traffic with your Facebook ad, you will drive the traffic with your email. And again, you'll bring them to your opt-in page and your money page of your offer. And you can also do these things too. Yeah? Okay, so don't get tied up that the traffic has to be generated from a Facebook ad. For existing clients, you replace the Facebook ad with your email but these principles are exactly the same. Okay. And what I'm trying to do there is we're trying to automate the process and use the funnel, the marketing funnel, to weed out those who definitely aren't gonna buy now and identify those who are ready to buy now. And then you pick up the phone to them. Those who say, I'm ready to buy now, then your call to action will probably be, if you're not gonna do an online booking is, um, book your consultation time with me now, yeah? And you're gonna go through that process and bring them into your, into your business. But it's far more effective, it's not, more, sorry, it's not far more effective. If you have time to lift up the phone to all those clients and cold call, that's fine, or even warm call if they're a past client. But this will allow you to systemize that a little bit, especially if you've a big database of past clients. Okay. Just to give you some visual representation of what a funnel looks like. So this is Janine, who's, who's, who's doing, has done this, um, launched this just prior to lockdown. Um, but she had her free guide. So she identified that she was going to target 
clients who were coming up to their first birthday, she identified with them that one of the big fears of new mums is that their birthday won't be the perfect first birthday. So she came up with your free guide, seven things to remember when planning your child's first birthday. So that's the ad that the client sees. They click on that. It brings them to the first landing page where they put in their details to get their name and address and all that. She builds some empathy and trust here by saying, I'm a mum too, I know what you're going through. She then break after they download it, they're brought to the money page. So this is, if you are ready to buy now, well then buy. And she this is all story branded out to deal with, there's a video here that she made herself, um, what the offer is, 100% satisfaction guarantee, why it's a, such an amazing offer, some testimonials, the plan. We talk about this in the website reviews, same for it. What is the plan of the process? Because we all presume that our clients know what the plan is. Uh, behind the cake, uh, or sorry, a video uh, showing the experience of the cake smash. And then book now, and they bring to an online booking form. She doesn't get them to pick the date and time because she wants to interact with the client to go through all that. But this can be simply, you know, um, send me an email. It could be send me an email and we'll, or let's chat and we'll have that consultation. Yeah. And then we go to the thank you. So this is designed to maximize, to help maximize the 15% of the 50% who are ready to buy now. Those who come here and download the free guide, but don't go on to book. Janine then retargets. So she retargets them by sending a series of emails because she tells them that this offer is only available for a set amount of time. And when it's gone, it's gone. Yeah. So she retargets them over that week with a three-day email sequence and then retargets them on Facebook too with the same message. And why do we do both of these things? I'm sure you've heard of the marketing multiplier. The marketing multiplier works in the principle that if you do one thing, you get X results. If you do two things, you don't get two X, you get three or four X. So that's why it's important that you do numerous things in your marketing because the marketing multiplier says the more things you can do effectively, that you will actually get a multiplier of results by touching them more than once or in one area. So that's why. Okay, so that might all seem very, very complex. It's not that complex. Um, in fact, those of you, some of you may already be in Business Success Academy, but we have a membership group, which has a course all around this, that we provided for the first month for $9.99. It's about seven quid if you're in the UK. I'll post a link to that if it's of interest to you, where we teach this. We've mentors in there, including Brad, who's a photographer, um, Janine is in the group as well, and we're, we're there to help you. And Jonathan, the media buyer I talked about, is there too. When you get all this right, it's what I call a cherry on top. And this is, the cherry on top is when your clients start doing the marketing for you. And this all comes down to making sure that you're giving them value, that you're making them feel special, that they're delighted with the experience, they're delighted with the purchase they made, because you show them how important they are and the difference your work makes to them and their lives and their family. Just like the cake, and I always finish on every presentation I do to do this. So if we bake the cake and we didn't have a tin, what's likely to happen? There'll be a right mess, right? Um, and I try and to explain to every photographer that if you're like me, a cake makes you smile. But nothing makes a human smile more than the work that you produce for, for them. And the tin for me represents three things. It represents the belief that you as the photographer have in what you do and the important difference it makes to society. It is the work you do because the work you do transforms our society. And what do I mean by that? Well, if you just think about, we talked about the cake making people smile um, and makes me smile. What makes me smile even more is when I see the photographic art that photographers have created of my family. And a human being, when they smile, one thing happens. It released, this is based in biology, it releases endorphins into the body. When those endorphins are released, guess what happens? When those endorphins get released, 
it reduces stress. When a person is less stressed, what happens? They're healthier in mind, body, and spirit. So while, and I couldn't do their job, but we have heroes at the moment in the front line saving people from COVID-19. And while we don't do the same job as them, we do have an important job as an industry, as photographers, to help our clients be healthier in mind, body, and spirit. And the one thing that's happening right now, and all the marketing research has shown it, is that families and couples are bonding closer together. And we as an industry can capture that for them. As Mary Fitz Taylor says, we can freeze time and capture those important images. And those images that will be in their folio box or in their album or on their wall, every single day are making those people feel more empowered, more proud of their families, have deeper relationships, and is creating a healthier body and mind, body, and spirit. So please never underestimate the important job you do for society as a photographer. So I promised I would share a couple of things with you. The first thing I need to share is I need to share um, a link to the website where you get the two-page business success plan. So I'm gonna do that now. So it's 3xmsolution.com forward slash Robin. And then I'm gonna answer questions if there's some questions. So that should be the link for that. And I need to share the link to Business Success Academy um, for the sign up. So if you go to Business Success, uh, let, no, let me do the website. So go to this website and press the Join Now button. And that will make the whole course on how to do a funnel. Plus, it will make the um, get you into the membership group for $9.99 for the first month. And after you're in there for a month, you can decide whether you're gonna stick with it or not. So that's the best I can do for you guys right now. But let's just see what questions you have and answer them. And um, here we go, Q&A, one question. Am I the only one with audio problems? John, no you're not, and I apologize for that. I hope you picked it up when I fixed this and I fixed any of those. Has anyone more questions before we call it a wrap um, for today? If anyone, any questions, just put them in the chat, ask some questions, happy to answer it. No? Thanks, Ron, I appreciate that, I did great. I hope there was something in there, Ron, that is of some help. And it's great to see you in Business Success Academy, Ron, because um, you're in there in the group and you're participating and I hope you're learning too. So thank you for that. Any other questions from anybody? No? Okay, well, I really appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. Please, please, please. We are gonna bounce out of this as an industry. It's not going to be easy. Nobody, it absolutely isn't gonna be easy. But the businesses who plan and put a plan around it, work out their numbers and recognize the important job we do as an industry and market effectively, are those who are gonna bounce out the quickest. I promise you that. I absolutely promise you that. So thank you so much. Um, does the Success Academy go into pumpkin? Good question, Carl. Um, so Carl, um, the short answer is yes and no. So Business Success Academy, in there, there are two pieces. There's one piece that is ways to go. And ways to go is the business success program that I developed out a couple of years ago. It's free for you to join. And in the idea, there's 10 modules. Photographers have described it like a mini MBA. We provide a free because we believe, not because it's no good, but we believe in both Business Success Academy and in 3XM Solution, that we, you know, the way to amplify the health of society, mind, body, and spirit is that photographers are armed with the business tools to create successful businesses, which means more wall art and folio boxes and albums in homes. So in the pumpkin plan, we deal with some of the principles in ways to go in the ideal client module. So if you go to ways to go, you can skip 
straight to the ideal client module and it goes through that. Story brand, I've been having trouble getting to the modules, could be my dyslexia. Um, okay, I'm not sure about that, Carl, as to what exactly that is, but I tell you what, if you go into ways, if you go into businesssuccessacademy.io and you register, you will see ways to go free if you have some trouble there, send me a messenger and I'll try and see what the issue is. But it's all laid out in, in a sequence um, and that you're looking for, for Pumpkin Plan, the ideal client module goes into Pumpkin Plan in some detail. And um, then for those of you who want to learn more about creating marketing funnels, then the offer is you'll see a join button on the website and for $9.99 converted, that's roughly, uh, eight euros, seven quid or thereabouts, you get access to the full funnel mastery system, which is a course. If you do that course, we encourage you all to do it. Don't be put off by it because it's the most complex funnel you can build. But we encourage all of our members to do that. And then you'll also be invited into our closed group, which is a, a Facebook workplace group, where we have a community of people who are implementing it. And we run weekly webinars to walk through the process and next week we're uh, next week's webinar in there for our members we're actually going to start the process of implementing their first funnel to build their leads from new clients so um, and and to give you an example brad is one of those mentors and brad already has a floating diary of 100 people booked in from his online marketing funnels as i said he creates 80 percent of his business and um, his bookings all the time using online marketing funnels and they're the most they're the biggest spenders with them because he's in control of his marketing and he's generating his own leads rather than buying them from someone else and he does both but his he, he gets absolutely more higher sales and we're going to need that yeah because we're going to have limited slots we can do between now when we come out of this but we've got to get more money on the slots we do to try and recover some of the money we've lost okay uh, no more questions coming in. Okay, I'm going to say good night for tonight. Uh, we are back with the Think Tank next week. We'll be here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. We'll be publishing the um, over the weekend or first thing Monday morning what the agendas are. And we have some great speakers lined up. If you've missed any of them, they're all there in the units tab within the group. If you click on the units tab, you'll see them all. And I strongly recommend you seeing as we're talking about marketing tonight as a key element, go back through all the marketing ones and the interviews that Mary Fist Taylor has done with four great marketing leaders of our industry already. She has had um, Alison Tyler Jones. She has had Audrey Willard. She has had Tim Walden and she has had Steve Sopriato. So please, please go and have a look at those. They're an hour long each. Binge watch them. Forget Netflix. Just watch those four webinars and then combine it with what we've done tonight and join Business Success Academy. Do ways to go if there's a particular model you want to do and you will fast track your business out of this recession. Ron, they're in the, um, in the Facebook page, so the photography think tank page. If you click on the units tab, they're all in there. And Mary's interviews are under uh, the sales and marketing tab. And you'll see them there. I think we've done about 20 of those videos so far. But you're looking for the ones that have Mary Fist Taylor interviewing Alison Tyler Jones, Audrey Willard, Tim Walden, and Steve Sapriato. Okay. Good night, guys. Have a great weekend and um, stay safe and healthy. And we'll see you all again soon. Bye for now.